Madhouse Podcasting Network. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Scaractor Appreciation Month here on the Mindless Horror Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Anthony, and today with me, a person I've gotten to meet uh, over the summer before haunt season, and uh, I've just gotten to know as a person, a uh, very nice person, very cool person. This is Sway. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Thank you so much for having me on the show. <laughs> oh, man. You were... Uh, now, I, I, uh, I knew... When I when I handpicked guests that I, I had to have you on because you were in one of my favorite mazes, if not my favorite maze this season at Not Scary Farm, good old Mesmer, the sideshow of the mind, man. That, oh, yeah. oh my God, what a talk about a beautiful maze right there, man. I don't. Uh, one gets casted into that, and you got to feel honored, man. I mean, that's an oh, you're opening it. Not only that, but it's just one of those things where uh, the maze just messes with people's minds like literally the sideshow of the mind it, it, it is what it it preaches what it what it is man and uh so tell me all about that man getting cast into a, a new maze opening it up having a dope ass uh part in it too um tell me all about how, how your excitement was when you got casted into that uh, mesmer yeah man definitely like um i was actually um pretty bummed out when um casting came around for a uh, um what was it 2021 season cuz uh i didn't get my rehire so i had a audition kind of like a way a uh, a rookie would audition so all the like all the good spots were i thought were filled already so i was going into it uh thinking i'm going to get a crappy like spot and like i was kind of going with it where just like i didn't care no more so i did my audition it was a uh, you had to record yourself. You got a bunch of scenarios and then you had to record yourself, send it in. And then it took a while until I even heard back too. So that also had me worried. And then once they finally said, we're ready for your interview, like to um, let you know where you're going. Um, the guy had two spots for me. He said that I could have either been a monkey in dark ride. And the other one, he said he wasn't sure about yet because Brandon had this um, had this idea for me to be part of it because of my stunt experience in 2019. Right. And they needed a stunt um, performer for that spot. So he was like, let me check in, see if it's still available. But as soon as he told me, like, I'd be a clown in the new maze, I was like super pumped. Like, I really wanted it. I was like, please, <laughs> please call, check, make sure, like, because I want to jump on that spot. Like, yeah. that has to be me this year. And just the fact that it was carnival themed, right. like I love circus and like anything that involves clowns, I'm just totally with it because I, I love clowns. <laughs> oh, no, I agree 100 percent. I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Carnival was my favorite zone this season uh, for the sole purpose of just clowns acting like clowns. But to see the phobia of people with who are scared of clowns, even walking through this maze, man, you could tell. There was people who had that phobia just like were trying to rush out of those rooms because they didn't want to be in those rooms any longer than they had to. But now I'm with you 100 percent. I think this this maze told a, an amazing story from start to finish. Um, this was a brand new maze for 2021 uh, when they announced it. It was um, a big deal because a lot of people were kind of like wondering what was going to be coming to uh, replace Shadowlands. And we'd seen construction. We've seen, uh, you know, we were hearing rumors and whatnot throughout the uh, off season. And then when they finally announced it, like, I think we were all pretty shocked as to what the theming was and whatnot and, and really excited for it. Um, I remember doing a breakdown video about it and just being genuinely excited to see what was to come. And then going opening night, walking through that maze, I was just shocked and impressed by how amazing and well detailed they did to really bring that that kind of sideshow of the mind aspect to life. You know what I mean? Like 
the mesmer part of it alive, you know? I mean, it all starts off in this grand room, obviously, with, you know, the the host of the show and everything, and he's doing his, like, um, he's doing his, uh, you know, his scene and whatnot, and he ends up, like, lifting the girl off the floor. Technology was great and whatnot, possessing her and kind of getting her, you know, into this, like, trans and whatnot. And to see all that go, and then as you walk through the maze and explore deeper and deeper into each room and, and the different aspects of circus kind of turn into a twisted new tale, I was just blown away. It was one of those mazes where I walked out and I was like, holy shit, like, this event never fails to impress. They always, I always walked out shocked, even if it's returning, like, I walked out shocked every year. And this was no short of that, man. And And so... Why don't you tell the audience, I mean, because your role seemed like a lot of fun. I, I would do something like that because it just looks a lot of fun. But why don't you tell the audience what you were, where you were, and who you were? All right. So I was casted as the demon bungee clown. And originally, when they gave me my script, like uh, my character, uh, my character sheet, I was supposed to have prosthetics on. But <laughs> me opening my big mouth saying I was a bungee, um, my makeup artist actually was very concerned about having me in a prosthetic. So um, it didn't go through. We ended up just doing makeup the whole the whole entire season. And uh, the other clown that scares in that room with me, he he had my prosthetic. Okay. And so they basically gave it to him. And um, I was totally fine with it because I loved using my facial expressions with the whole clown look and stuff. Right. But yeah, I had a lot of fun doing Bungie. Like I said, this was my uh, second year uh, back on uh, Bungie because they had me doing stunts um, when I first started. So I was already used to it. I was super pumped. The only thing that made me sad of being in that room was by the time they come to my room, guests have already like they've had enough. They come through running. (laughs) Some of them don't even bother looking up. They're just like, crawling or they're on their knees looking down and <laughs> and then there's me every time i walk through to make sure to purposely look in that area <laughs> just to see if i see yeah. um yeah i would i i i i'm not the one of those people that run i i would take my time walking through this maze because i just had to look at everything there was so much to look at there was stuff that you would miss the first time and you'd catch the second time around and just be blown away by. And I think every time I walked through that maze, I saw something that I didn't see the first time. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And you learn to appreciate a lot of the art that goes into putting a lot of these things together. But, yeah, I mean, I was the type of person every every time I'd walk through your room, I was like, oh, is, is Sway here? Let me see if he's here. Uh, I think I saw you. You may, uh, unless I walked through and you may have seen me and I didn't see you. But I think I saw you at least once this season, which was. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah, I think. Maybe even twice. Maybe I swear twice. I've seen you more than once. Yeah. I probably walked through the first time not knowing it was you. And then the second time when I went through with uh, Mooch and all them, they like yeah. immediately told me who you were and where you were. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll be on a lookout. And then we all walked through. And I think it was like towards the end of the night. And we were just kind of just Oh, yeah. And those to walk are the through. best times to come because that just makes my night seeing my friends again. Yeah. No, I mean, there I. There was definitely a lot of people going like through that maze over and over again. Yeah, dude. I walked through that maze. Uh, we went a total of five times. I think I walked through that maze a total of like seven or eight times out of the five times I went because I was just blown away by it. And I would take some of my friends through it who either develop haunts or just are fans of the art and whatnot. And we would just nerd out afterwards as we're, you know, cause there's that long walk in the exit all the way back to Fiesta village. And, yeah. uh, so we, we would just geek out on the way back We'd be like, Oh my God, dude, like, I can't believe they pulled this off. I can't believe they pulled that. You know, it was just, what I've always said is, uh, what kind of acid was this guy on when he made this maze? Cause, uh, this is, this is damn good. This is a really solid maze and I cannot wait to see, uh, it, not only can I wait to see it come back, but, you know, usually would not, uh, when mazes stay for a certain amount of time, they like to tweak or change a couple of things, you know, add a new room or so. So I'm excited to see what they add, what they what they keep, and, and how it, it goes from there. I mean, easily, I mean, I know me and you, you were my inside guy over the week or over the season, so me and you would always geek out as to who was uh, winning Maze of the Night or whatnot, and... You know, we would, we have our own like little scoring system, which was a lot of fun. And I remember you guys, uh, we, me and you would always just geek out if if you guys came in the top three or whatnot. So that was a lot of fun to look at. Yeah, hell yeah, that that was a lot of fun too. But it, it's actually sad because um, what ended up happening at the end of the season, it was uh paranormal, obviously when it and like they deserved it because right. they do two hour and thirty shifts on a Thursday and Sunday, which is technically supposed to be our early days where we only have three hour shifts. Right. 
So they they put in a lot of work, and then that's that's what we did on the final night. We all just went through. We're like, they deserve it. <laughs> yeah, the final year, man. It's all right. Mesmer is gonna take it first year uh, for its uh, first place next year. I promise you. I hope it wins some kind of award because, like you said, there's just so much work that goes into that maze that you're just like, what the hell did I go through? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I was thinking the exact same thing the first time I went through. I was like, wow, I I am just there's no words, just wow. Um, and it was a lot of fun, uh, but let's, let's, uh, let's take it back a little bit, man. You, you talked about doing uh stunt work in the past with, uh, with knots before this is, was this your second year ever at the event working it? Yeah. Second year with knots, but third year of, uh, of haunt. scaring. Okay. Yeah. Third year uh, of scaring. Your first year working at a haunt. Where were you at? My first year was, uh, 2019 in, um, Shadowlands. Shadowlands. Okay. Shadowlands. So, oh man, you just you just never left, huh? You were you just stayed in the yeah. same spot. <laughs> Something about Accelerate just kept calling to me. <laughs> yeah, man, that's your home right there. You're like, I ain't leaving this spot. This is me. I own this spot. Yeah. Um, it was the home to a lot of classic mazes, so yeah. not a bad spot to be at. <laughs> exactly. Were you doing the same exact thing as you were doing in Mesmer, uh, bungee work and all that? Um, yes, but just the whole um, the whole thing was a lot different. Right. A lot different than what I had to do in Mesmer. Right. What was uh, what was the biggest difference you would say between Mesmer and your time at Shadowlands? Different, definitely the distance. So in Mesmer, um, so that room originally, like we were even supposed to have a stilt walker there. The guy that was below me, he was supposed to be on stilts, but the room was just built too small. Like it was, it was originally supposed to be a lot bigger. Right. So that way I can um, do a Superman jump towards guests. Like I would still do that some nights, but um, they basically wanted me to just jump up and down because, you know, uh, we don't want a uh, guest to get harmed or right. get in the way of the jump. So basically I was just always jumping, pretending like I'm, I'm about to snatch everyone. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Um, so in Shadowlands, were, you were the, the ending scene. Right? Is that where the bungee yeah, was? Yeah, in the, the samurai room. Yeah, the samurai room. The two stunts, the rig samurai, and then the bungee samurai. Okay. And uh, you got to go down and scare the hell out of people and try to chop them like you were a scorpion from freaking Mortal Kombat, <laughs> huh? Yep. I got I got to use a sword. Sadly, like, I didn't know you are supposed to ask uh, for the sword, so I only had the sword really on, like, the last night of Haunt. Hey, man, if you're going out, you go out with the bang, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I like that. So yeah. you, you do Shadowlands. You close that out for the 2019 season. 2020 comes around. Uh, knots doesn't happen, uh, obviously, due to the pandemic. Uh, what do you? How do you figure out ways around that? What do you do next? Uh, I actually, um, I got hired last minute to do uh, Urban Legends. Okay. Yeah, I had I had applied to that haunt, but it's funny. I got turned down. A lot, a lot of people actually got turned down from what I heard because obviously the people that got turned down eventually ended up getting hired. Right. And so, um, yeah, I ended up doing that. And that that was that was really weird. So that event, <laughs> you had to work from Tuesday through Sunday. Oh, wow. And you just get yeah. Monday off. At least you got Monday off. Monday's like the worst day of the week. I know no one want to go to work on a Monday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, man. So we, we had a we had a lot of break with that, but that one it was a lot of fun because it gave me kind of like the experience of being on streets, not not so close to being on streets, but enough to the point where you have to walk through these cars just roaming around like you're not in one tight space, you know. Yeah, and I got to go to that event uh, two times. I went opening night, and then I went I think later on in the season. Uh, what was your role there in uh, Urban Legends? Uh, I was one of the uh, miners. Oh, those people that um, so what we ended up doing, like we had chains, we would we would make loud noises, bang walls. Uh, I had this uh, tactic scare where they would give us these flashlights that would uh, like a bandana with right. flashlights. And so I would always put it on the bottom of a car and I'd point it to the wall. So I'd make the guests look at the wall, like making them think I'm about to creep up on, on the corner where the light's at, but really I'm going on the other side and I'll come creep <laughs> up and then I'll scare them. Yeah, you know, dude. It was really funny because they weren't expecting it at all. <laughs> and you know what? I'd have to say 2020, obviously probably the hardest and most challenging season to try to come up with ways to scare. I mean, obviously a lot of people were seduced and, 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 and locked into their car. And so there was, there was, you had to be very creative with it. And I felt like in that scene, um, 
I got to go through it a couple times and to see what you guys accomplished in that scene as far as scare factors go, I was very impressed because, like I said, we were in a pandemic, so there was not much we can do. There was not much distance we could do and whatnot. So we had to really be kind of uh, more uh, creative with it. And I would say that that zone right there was pretty creative of how they got scared, especially uh, having those giant kind of, uh, what are they, the big crates to use against too and stuff. So, that I mean, that helped a lot. But you're talking about li loud noises and stuff. A lot of people even get freaking scared of just the loud noise. So, I mean... It, it's 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 cool to see that you figured out a way to scare during a pandemic. That's it was probably a really big challenge in the beginning, but you ended up probably finding your flow towards the end. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. I mean, great work. So, twenty nine or twenty twenty ends. Uh, we're all having fingers crossed that uh, theme park haunts open up again. We want to see be back in that environment. Uh, and we get the idea. We get the uh, the okay that they're happening. Uh, so you end up like you said, trying out for Mesmer uh, or trying out in general, doing the rehire. Um, and you end up having to submit your audition. You get the interview. You get casted into Mesmer. Um, what were your thoughts going into the opening night? Obviously, this was the first time we had a crowd at this capacity come to the event. Um, we're starting to get back into the flow of things. How did it feel just being back, dude? It just how did that? How was that feeling opening night go? Oh, it, it felt so great. It felt re refreshing. Like, like I said, in, in Urban Legends, we had to work Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, now that I'm back on the not schedule, I was like, this is this is nothing. Yeah. Like, I feel Sunday, like that good. prepped me for the season. Right. Because we only had one break, um, one 30 minute break at Urban. And that was it. We were constant after that. No, no, no more breaks. Wow. Yeah. And the event was from like, I think uh seven to midnight okay seven okay. to twelve yeah yeah um, so so then being back on that not schedule you're like all right thursday through sunday i get a couple breaks and and a lunch like let's i'm fucking ready let's go yeah you're basically refreshed and like i said at knots like they take care of you like they have so much food like in your break areas and it's your choice if you want to go eat at um we call it cruise cruise nest. over there they give you a bunch of food yep. for like five bucks i i uh I've had the opportunity to work at Knott's before, and I, I, oh, do, that's dearly, right. yeah. I do dearly miss the food at Cruise Nest. That uh, chicken tender quesadilla. Yeah. Bomb, bro. That's the one thing I remember more than anything. But, yeah, Cruise Nest, uh, great. And I always used to love, during Scary Farm, it was uh, free soda. And then, of course, year-round, they had uh, free tea and free water. So that was that was always a lot of fun. I would always, like, load up on, a, like, a giant peach tea before i left and take that home with me and just drink on that on the way home so yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun to, to do that but no man i mean that's cool you got to work mesmer so opening night you're feeling great it's going back to it uh we're talking now mid-season man uh you're all, you're you're kind of getting more adjusted to who you are as far as your character and whatnot uh how, how is mid-season treating you and and how is it going towards uh getting into that spot again uh mid-season i was just like um at this point, I was I was feeling the like the strain of being in a new maze, like the constant movement because so many guests want to do the new thing. Right. So at that point, I started having to drink Monster <laughs> on my break. That's where I started busting out the energy drinks. Right. Because I, I normally don't drink energy like my body has enough energy as it is. Right. So like right. I felt like I needed it. So that's where I started. Yeah. Mid season, I started feeling it started getting all the monster energy in you and started really hyping yourself up, getting really into the zone of it and, yeah. and delivering one of the best goddamn shows in the world, man. Uh -huh. um, Thank you, man. End of the season, man. I mean, it's neck and neck. You guys are racing to see who's going to, who's going to come out uh maze of the year. Uh, I know you guys were working tirelessly and hard on it. Cause I mean, that whole cast was just very talented and phenomenal. Um, End of the season, man. What are you feeling? Are you, are you just getting adjusted there? Or are you are you kind of at the point where you're like, I'm thinking I need a little break after this, but this has been a, a definitely a, a memorable and fun season. No, uh, end uh, end of the season. I felt just like we like we got to put like basically um, the final week or ending closing season to me is basically like opening opening right. week. I I got to put that same exact show that I did opening week, and that's literally what I want to give. Like one, one final time that they walk in through the maze, I want to give them that same performance. Yeah. 
So you're going in with the same energy from when you started to all the way to when you're in. That's that energy staying there, huh? Yeah, because I know I'm going to miss it. Yeah. So I basically cherish every last moment and minute that I'm there. And like also, too, it was the perfect spot. Like I didn't get that many um, that many uh, negative uh, feedback from guests. Right. Like I was always having people laughing. People just saying this is awesome. Like they've never seen anything like this. There was yeah. so many people that, ha that have never done knots before and you can see it in their face. Yeah, they were just shocked. <laughs> no, I I agree. I've actually convinced a couple people this season to go check out knots uh, that have been either diehard Horror Nights fanatics or just are just trying to explore. And they went to knots for the first time this season and instantly fell in love with it. I mean, just going through one maze, they were in love with it. Just walking through the gates and going through a scare zone, they were in love with it because they've never seen anything like that before. Um, you talk about the place that started sliding. You talk about the place that really innovated the haunt scene. Um, and made it what it is today. I mean, I always say without knots, man, I don't think any of these other haunts would be where they are today, man. They wouldn't gotten the inspiration to do what they do if it weren't for knots, man. This is the OG. This is the one that started it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. So, I mean, I, that's great, man. It's great to hear you had a, a freaking phenomenal year at Mesmer, dude. I mean, you guys, like I said, every time I went through, gave 110%. And I, I was always blown away every time I went through that. Like I said, every time I went through, I, I noticed something new and it, it made the maze way more fun for me it was a lot more just kind of what can i see what's next and and what can i see uh that i didn't notice the first time scare wise a lot of people try to tr really work with their rooms and just you know innovate and just test out and just go for it and I, and I love the hell out of that when people use their rooms to their advantage that's 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 what they're there for have fun with it stay safe but have fun with it <laughs> yeah of course definitely yeah. safety is always number one for for everything man but i'm glad you guys had a great time now, I have to ask you, man, uh, outside of Haunt, man, are you, you got a character, you do, you do any cosplays outside, you keep the, you keep the, the Halloween flow for you year round, or are you just kind of like, that's when I like to take it back a little and just kind of chill. Um, no, I, I keep, I keep, I keep it Halloween like 24 seven, basically all I do when season's over, I attend, uh the photo meets right. um, that happen locally in LA, thanks to uh, Story Films right. um, for hosting these meets. And um, if it's not that, I'm looking forward to Midsummer Scream, all the horror conventions that happen. Right. And then now we got Halloween Depot. Yeah. And sometimes I'll dress up and then like, I won't be in character, but sometimes I'll find a friend that makes me want to be in the character. And like, that always keep, that always just makes it fun seeing friends there because that that's why I always say when haunt ends it's not really a goodbye because I just end up seeing them at a horror convention or something yeah yeah when we got a lot coming up man I mean Midsummer Scream is going to be hosting a Christmas theme called Season Screamings that's going to be freaking sounds like a lot of fun that's right um we got that coming we got another Halloween Depot I think in the works maybe for December I've been seeing them tease that on their Instagram page um like you said story films he's back in full effect you know he likes to take the month of september and october off for everyone to do their haunts and then it's back to full action in november um but he's back so we got a lot of those going and i'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of stuff throughout the season scattered uh whether yeah. it be from the home haunt scene or whether it be from just events you know spooky swap meets whatever it may be something's gonna pop up uh but not to mention you, you brought up photography man and uh those who don't know, man, Sway is a phenomenal photographer. I mean, the guy has taken pictures of some iconic things. Um, I, I remember even watching him take pictures of, of one of my favorite bands, Rise Against, and I was like, uh, how the hell did you do that? Like, how did you get in that? Like, I want to do kind of stuff like that for video and stuff. But, no, just to see you uh, evolve and, and really um, go after what you're, what you're passionate about. That's, that's what it's about, man. This is why I do what I do because this is what I, stuff that I love doing. I don't care if I got paid a million dollars for it or freaking no dollars for it. Like I'm going to keep doing the way I do things my style and, and just keep it going. But talk to us about your, your, uh, your little life in, in photography, man. I know it's something that you like to do. It's a hobby that you enjoy doing. How's that been going for you? Yeah, sure, man. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Honestly, the um how I started um back in high school, uh I used to be a historian. So I used to take photos of field trips, like just any um gathering that we had, a memory that we had to remember. Right. And once I gave up that camera, I ended up wanting to um have one of my own. So when I got my first job, 
and I got that like first paycheck, <laughs> I had to go buy a camera. Right. And so that's what I ended up doing. And um, I would just take photos at conventions of people. And then from there, I'm, I met a girl named Trixie. And then she's the one that was like, yo, there's these photo meet thingies where people cosplay, dress up, get creepy. You might like it. And so I went there. And then that's where it just took me to that whole world of meeting all my friends that work at Knots and how can I do this? How do I join? Right. <laughs> I got to get that knowledge from them firsthand. And then I also met um, Rabbit, uh, who's out in Boardwalk. Right. He's the reason why I do um, concert shooting. He's the one that got me started on that. That's a lot of fun, dude. I mean, yeah. like I said, uh, most recently you did Rise Against, and that was one of my favorite bands uh, in high school, and it still is to this day. Love their music. Uh, love the message they send out about their music and whatnot, and just all a great band. Um, what's been some of your, your highlights uh, shooting? It doesn't even have to be concerts, but just shooting in general. Like, what 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 what, what, what what's the joy it brings for you? I mean, I know a lot of people – have these hobbies and they and there's certain reasons behind it is this like a, a therapeutic thing for you or is it just something you just like doing it, it's just something i love doing it's it's something where like i i look back on some of my photos i don't just take them and like never look at them again like i'm just like i look at them and i'm like i made that yeah and then there's people that will even repost my images that they'll want like to save my images and it'll mean a lot to them so like i always felt like a photo was basically a cherished memory. So the deeper meaning like that that goes into a photo, it just meant a lot to me. So I kept on doing it. And one of the shows that I actually like to this day is probably the favorite show I the most like badass show I've ever done was a uh, tool in San Diego. Nice. And that was thanks to my buddy drone. Um, Cause he was a big tool fan. And then he was like, yo, they're coming around. You should probably request for this show. And I'll, I'll drive you over there and we can stay at a hotel or something. And sure enough, I got it and we shot it. <laughs> tool, man. That's a good band. That's a very uh, experimental band as far as their sound and whatnot. And that's why I've something I've yeah. always loved about them. They've been, uh, whether it be what they do with the bass or just what they do with guitars and whatnot. I mean, that, that band seriously is uh, an innovator in music and, and spawned a new generation of music, which I loved. Um, that's awesome, man, to get to, to get to shoot all these bands and stuff, especially, I mean, you being a fan of a lot of these bands too, like same with me, punk and rock and, and just metal and all that. I mean, it, it must be cool. Like, you know, growing up listening to a lot of these bands and now you're there in the front shooting a lot of these bands, you know what I mean? Like the opportunities must be dope. Oh yeah. It, it, it it's definitely a good feeling when you don't got to like shove people to get to the front. Right. Like I always hated that. And then especially when you were at the front, there's people that still try pushing their way through. Ooh, so I, like, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Trust me. I saw the misfits in 2017 and yeah. that's exactly how it was. Yeah. I grew up going to warp tours. So like, yeah, that's a bunch of stuff that I always had to deal with. There's always someone trying to get to where you're standing and it's like, Come on. <laughs> ah, dude, it, it does suck. That's why I just, what I do now is, you know, I get into the pit, but I'll stand in the middle of the pit where all the people yeah. stand. And, you know, if people bump into me, it's bound to happen. I'll just push them away. But I'm enjoying the show. And basically, I have my own little space. So it's like, you going to mess with this tall ass six foot six guy? <laughs> I don't think so. Like, I mean, you're going to have to freaking bring a a semi truck just to knock me out of the way, bro. It's like, it ain't going to work. Like, let's go. But. Now that's cool, man. I really, I really do dig that uh, you're doing your photography and whatnot. So, let's talk about the future of Sway, man. I mean, obviously, we don't know where tomorrow's going to take us. We don't know where we're gonna, what's going to happen in the next damn five minutes. Um, but do you have plans for your future at Haunt, um, whether it be Scary Farm or wherever you end up? Do you, do you have plans? And eventually, do you want to go play out in the streets? Yes, I do. I do plan on coming back to Knott's, so I'll be back <laughs> for yeah. people that don't know. Yeah, I'll yeah. be back. And um, every year I audition, I've always auditioned to be on Boardwalk. That's always been like a home that I've always wanted to join. It's just because I have so many friends there that I just would love and it'd be an honor to be with them. So that's where I'm trying to go for this year. So I'm definitely going to practice and just, you know, um, 
do my best to knock knock it out and kill that audition so that I can finally be on streets. Yeah, man. Here's the charm. So we'll Fingers see. The charm, man. I'm hoping the uh, the higher ups have noticed you at Knots this year and 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 noticed the talent that you have and and maybe work with you to get you on those streets, man, and and just try to help you out. However, if you do up and end up in a maze next year, man. It's never a bad thing. Always have more experience. Oh, no, yeah, about, and it, No, yeah, and I know you completely agree with that. Um, yeah. That goes for I already anyone. have amazing mind. There you go. If, See, if, he's, if my plan wasn't to go through, yeah. He's already he's already got a backup to the backup, you know what I mean? It's like he's ready to go. Um, yeah. But, no, that goes for anyone out there trying to audition. Like, I know a lot of people that audition for these really want to be on streets, but you put your time in mazes and you put in the hard work and dedication in said mazes, uh, upper management won't notice, and – Either some of the sometimes they'll come to you directly, or sometimes they'll just wait till next season, and you will be rewarded uh, a spot on streets. So respect to all the maze people, though, man. You guys put in a fuck ton of work, and it's even smaller space, so even it's even more of a risky sometimes job uh, with with some you know certain audiences and whatnot. Either whether they be drunk or whatnot, but you guys uh, put up a fucking fight every night, and I appreciate the fuck out of that. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Staying safe, always the biggest key to any haunt or anything you do, honestly. Just always stay safe, and, and you know that more than anyone. Obviously, you working in stunts and whatnot, so yeah, you know that a lot. But uh, no, nah, I'm excited, man. If you end up on Boardwalk, that's going to be a fun time because, you know, I got to get more footage other than that uh, that Mooch guy over there because <laughs> he didn't really give me much this season. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking to my buddy – um. My buddy Oingo about it. He was just on the podcast recently, and uh, yeah, I watched it. Yeah, yeah, he's great guy, man. So I can see you guys having some good interactions and whatnot together. I mean, that guy, that guy's funny too, man. Him and uh, <laughs> him and Mooch make me laugh. So to get to get out there and and have a good time, that'd be a lot of fun. Especially, you know, the I always call that the chaos zone because you know they you never know what you're gonna get at that night, man. There's gonna always be something that's gonna make you laugh or. You know, you're going to look at something and just go, wow, that was pretty impressive or something. I mean, th those people on Boardwalk are very talented. And that goes for every scare zone, everything I walk through. They always sell the story, and they always immerse me into those worlds. So I can love all – I love Haunt. I just love talking about Haunt. Like, I could do this Dang. all year round. I really can. Um, with that being said, obviously we know that the first years on streets, um, from what I've heard, uh, aren't given full permission to slide, but they have some nights where they do a mentorship where they let you slide. Is sliding in the future of Sway, or do we want to? Do you kind of have more ideas beyond sliding? Like, what do you want to do? Oh yeah, no, sliding's always been an idea of mine. Like, I do go out, um, practice sometimes with my friends at the rinks whenever uh, the the Queen Mary sliders have a sliding practice. Like, right. it's just a nice thing to have in your uh, arsenal, you know? Yeah, always good to have it like, in the arsenal, man. Always, always yeah. good to have as much tools as you can to get out there and 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 get the the job of scaring done, man. Yeah, and then the fact that like I can do a uh, bungee every night, I feel like I, I I can do have the stamina to do some sliding some nights, not most nights, but you know. Yeah, you gotta just go off and on with it, man. Maybe one week and you're like, I'm feeling it. Like let's let's throw on the pads, and then one week you're like, you know what? I'm gonna take it a little easy, but I'm gonna still go hard out there. You know what I mean? Like, well, hell yeah, definitely. That's awesome. I can't wait man. for that year to happen. I can't wait to see it, man. I can't wait yeah. to see what you come up with, and I can't wait to see uh, how it works for you, man. Because I'll be there sitting on one of the planners being like, let's go, Sway! <laughs> let's That's go. how it was all season. People just coming through, Sway! Uh, <laughs> you know, I, was. That, I freaking love this. It hyped me up a lot. You're known, Thank man. You. You're known, man. It's getting out there. People know who you are. That's cool. Um, I got to talk to you about your tattoos, man. I'm loving what I'm seeing on, on your body, man. Uh, I see you oh, got some, you, you got some night yeah. before Christmas. Is that, if I'm not mistaken, that, that other side, is that Beetlejuice? Yes, it is. It is Beetlejuice. <laughs> That's cool, man. Beetlejuice seems, and Sandworm. <laughs> it seems like you got a little story going on, man. Do each tattoos have a meaning or is this just stuff you really love? I mean, I'm seeing like a whole Nightmare Before Christmas side. I'm hearing like a whole Beetlejuice side. Like what's yeah. the story behind the tattoos, man? I love them. Well, it, it's basically, I just want to get covered up with uh, Tim Burton movie uh, tattoos. Right. Because uh, I just love those movies. Those movies basically, like, shaped up who I am today and, like, the, the stuff I'm into. So it has a lot of meaning to me. So, yeah, this this arm's just dedicated to the Nightmare for Christmas, like, movie. Right. And then this other arm's just other Tim Burton stuff. I better see a, a Michael Keaton Batman on there pretty soon. Oh, well, I, on this shoulder, I'm going to have a... Some something nine related. I have to have something nine related. Nice. I don't know if you saw that movie. I have. It's a good movie. 
Tim Burton yeah. is a very good. What about uh, you got? What about looking at like Corpse's Bride and stuff like that too? Or oh hell yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe a nice. I gotta little, have an Emily in there. <laughs> nice little Jack Nicholson Joker right there. You know, I mean that's always a good one. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Batman, Jack Nicholson yeah. Joker, or some or or Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. I mean, you can't go wrong with Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. That one's a pretty good one too. True. Uh, no, that's cool, man. I like I uh, I I am slowly getting into the world of tattoos. I have four on me currently. Um, nice. All of them kind of represent different things. Uh, do I have four? Yeah, I got four. I had to count real quick because that's I don't, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> I got two on my left arm, one on my, and then two on my right arm. Um, I have a quote that says, "We don't have much, but we have each other." Um, oh, all right. Because you know, I, I never grew up. I I think I grew up good, like okay, like we were never you know, poor or anything, but I am fortunate enough to, uh, have grown up that way. And I know a lot of yeah. people out there have struggled and, and whatnot, and it always kind of hurt me to see that. So my, my saying to that in life is, you know what, we may all not have much in life, but in the end of the day, we have each other. And that's, what's most important. Um, the time you spend with your family, the, your loved ones, uh, your friends, like, that is what keeps life going right there. Like, yeah, you can have all this money, you can have all these cars, you can have all the, you know, all these properties and whatnot. But at the end of the day, what really makes you happy is the people that you surround yourself with. So, plus it's a quote from one of my favorite bands, uh, The Interrupters. So, that's always fun. Batman v Superman for me and my dad. My dad's a massive Superman fan. I'm a massive Batman fan. <laughs> Punisher logo because I like to look at life not living it in fear like he does. Yeah. Um, obviously, I didn't go through a, a, a a tragedy like he did, but, um, I like the way he lives his life where he doesn't live it in fear. He doesn't, you know, and that's how I like to live life. You can't live it in fear. Uh, and my final logo is my misfits tattoo. Yeah, because, I mean, that band means a lot to me, man. That, that band right there is a full on represent representation of Halloween. And that's the closest Halloween tattoo I have right now. So <laughs> see where I go from there. Um, that's cool, man. I get to, uh, you know, it's cool. It's cool to actually. Uh, I remember when we first met. It was actually at the rink. Um, yeah. I was sitting there with the Queen Mary Sliders while they were doing their practice, and I would just go. In the beginning, I was going and filming some stuff for a, a buddy of mine, and then um, afterwards, I kind of just uh, would go and just show up and hang out. And uh, it was a lot of fun to see all that, and and so then that's how I met you, and me and you talked for a little bit, and then we've been keeping tabs and and talking all haunt season, man. So. It it really is become a, a really cool friendship uh, with you, man. And all I can say is thank you for that. No, thank you, man. It's it's always nice when like I get to finally meet the people that I've been watching for years. Because oh, like you know, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it weren't for those videos. Oh man, we just look at we're just we're all fans in the end of the day. I, I, the only difference between you and I is I just I picked up a camera and just started expressing my opinions about things to the world. Um, <laughs> You have your form of art where you get to uh, express your your feelings and whatnot through the art of scaring and and your photography and how you choose to live your life, man. That's just that's how it is, man. We're all here. Like I said, man, life is short. We got to enjoy every single moment of it, and you never know. Tomorrow might be the last day or 20 years from now might be the last day. We don't know. Every day, yeah, we just got to live life treat to the fullest. Treat each day like it's its last, yeah. Yeah, man, that's how we do it. And I think that's what it's like when we go to haunts. We like to treat each day like it's its last. We got to go through and have a fun experience, laugh, get scared, uh, bond with people. And it's just a, it's just an all-around fun time. I think, for me, haunts very therapeutic. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, so, Sway, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to learn more about uh, one of my favorite mazes this season and just to get to know you more as a person. Um we do these podcasts because uh, we like to learn more about the people who play the monsters because I have to, I have to constantly preach this a lot. You guys are people. <laughs> You're not monsters year round. You are people. Um, and much like a lot of people, you got feelings, you got opinions, you got everything, you know, you you live like a normal person and you got stories to tell. Um, oh, one last story I want to hear. Mesmer obviously being in the area you were, I have to know. Did you have any uh, some funny stories that happened? Did you drop any guests? Did you or were were guests already too damn scared as they were coming through your maze? It was just like what funny just to watch that. Well, like like I said, yeah, like it, there was so many people that were just done by the time they went to my uh my my room. So like to me, it didn't really like catch any like um 
uh how do you say like mem like it wasn't unique right like whatever happened in that room but the one thing that i'll always remember i i got one guy he he came in through looking serious and so i did my scare and he was like oh shit like he he was not ready <laughs> and so he leaves he kind of looks angry but he leaves and then comes back later he comes back through the same exit and then he just goes like this <laughs> he looks up to where i'm at and then just point like gives me thumbs up and like i don't know why but that was like my favorite season like my i mean my favorite situation by far Oh man, it seems like he 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 was not enjoying himself throughout the maze, and it was the ending that like just was like, oh, that got me, that really. Mm -hmm. And you 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 right there gave him the best experience of his life, and he'll probably never forget that. Yeah, and that's all we could ask for is just making that that connection with the guests. The fact that they're gonna remember that, and then it's that that is gonna want them to come back. So that's kind of like what they tell us to do: always create a memory, like. They want us to scare them to the point they're going to think about it and want to go through it again, you know? <laughs> I've always, uh, someone told me this quote one time. It was actually a haunt monster, and I forget who told me this. It was, uh, if you can't scare them, uh, make them laugh. If you can't make them oh, laugh, interact yeah. with them. Either way, they're going to remember that experience at all times. So That's what I always said, too. Yeah, if you can't scare me, entertain me. Yeah. Like, when I'd always come as a guest, like, that's literally how... Well, whatever I, whenever I came as a guest, that's how I scare out there. Whatever I kind of wanted is what I do out right. there. Yeah, man. I mean, that's how I always see it. Like, if you can't scare me, make me laugh. If you can't make me laugh, then immerse me into this story and sell me because uh, one of those three are bound to happen yeah. anywhere I go. So, yeah, man, that's cool. Uh, the last question I got to ask you on this show, man, and this is usually a lot. It's really hard for some people, but for some people, they answer it just like that. Uh, what's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I knew this one was coming. Any of the Puppet Master movies. Interesting. I've never heard that answer because I don't think a lot of people really dive deep that deep into the horror genre, but that's Yeah, Puppet I Master, brag right? about that movie like long. Like if you've been like if you followed me back in like 2018, I would talk about this movie a lot, especially when I go to conventions because people sell the actual puppets. Right. And so I'm just in awe of seeing them. But like I'm, ne I'm never able to buy them because they're super expensive. Yeah. But yeah, I've always just loved the Puppet Master movies because those puppets are super creepy. I I I, I want to say this, my friend. One day, one day it's gonna be in your possession. <laughs> oh. One day, one day it will be in your possession. You can have it as as a good background for whatever oh, yeah. you want to use, man. And you can even you can even shoot with that thing. Put it in random places in Los Angeles and just shoot around it. That'd be a lot of fun, huh? Yeah, well, I have a lot of maquettes. I collect a lot of statues, so I'm definitely going to have a whole shelf like dedicated to stuff like that. That's cool, man. Uh, being that you see you, I'm going to I'm going to quiz you a little bit now. Being that you knew that question was coming, what's my favorite scary movie? Uh, damn it. I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like putting you on the spot. You don't really have Wait, to. Wait, no, no, no. Something something with Jason Voorhees, right? Or no? No. Ah, but I do like me some Jason. Jason's pretty good. It's all right. I just wanted to put you on the spot, just to see, <laughs> just to see, just to be, just to be kind of, kind of a dick, maybe. I don't know. It was <laughs> well, a lot of fun, me. regardless. Uh, no, but honestly, Sway, it's been uh, a pleasure talking with you, and it's been a uh, pleasure watching you do what you do this season, and it's just been a pleasure knowing uh, knowing you as the person. So uh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, anywhere they could follow you on Instagram to keep up to date with your photography, with who you are, or are you a private man? No, uh, you can follow me. I only have an Instagram. Um, it's Sway's at Sway's Creepy Life. Um, I have a bunch of uh, uh, underscores, but you really don't need them. Uh, you just type in Sway's Creepy Life, you'll find me. You'll find the the picture of you. Uh, is that you dressed up as a clown in that picture? Yeah, that's that. That was kind of like my like I don't know like that was a look that I did that I just always loved and I like I turned it. it into stickers and it just. It, it it went further than it needed to, so I just yeah. stuck with it. There you go, man. I mean, maybe yeah. one day we actually get to see it out on the streets. I, I hope so. Who knows? To not, be continued. Yeah. To be continued, man. We want to. We want to give too too much away for twenty twenty two, man. We want to give them just <laughs> enough for them to be excited to come back next year. That's what we want to give them. Of course, that's right. That's right. Anyway, uh, Sway, it's been an absolute pleasure, man, and I can't wait to see what happens with you next year and uh, and the future beyond you, man, because you got a bright future ahead of you, kid, and I'm excited to uh, 
help you uh, get to where you need to get any way I can. So uh, thanks for being on the show and just thanks for being a cool person. Thank you, man. Much I appreciate love. it. Much it's love. It's been an honor. Oh, man. I, like I said, can't wait to see what you do next season and we'll be right there with you, whether it be on a planner or on a bench cheering you on. So that'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, man. man I was freaking burping left and right from dinner. <laughs> um, with all that being said, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification where every time we put up a new video, leave some comments down for Sway. Uh, show him some love and support. Tell him what you loved about Mesmer and tell him what you uh, love about his photography or just tell him that you love him. And then that would be <laughs> that'd be a lot right there. Um, and also follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror to keep up to date what we're doing in the haunt scene or just any updates in general. Um, I, I want to preach this a little bit because, you know, it's been going through my head a lot. If you guys are feeling down, if you guys are feeling anywhere, uh, in a in a dark or, or sad and depressed uh, space, hit us up uh, or seek any attention or help that you can. Um, the tough times that we're living in really are. And uh, whether it's tougher in your personal life that people don't know what's going on behind the scenes or if it's public, um, talking with friends or just talking with a professional help as well, or whether it be um, psychiatrist or a therapist or whatnot, um, they will help you get to hopefully guide you in the right direction. But just know our DMs are always open, so come down and say hi. Uh, with all that being said, my name's Anthony, your host from the Knights of Horror. This is the Mindless Horror Podcast presents Scare Actor Appreciation Month, and we'll see you guys in the next episode for another podcast. You're moving into a